This is the Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus graphing calculator. Now, uh, these calculators have been around for quite some time. They were introduced in 1999. So as of the making of this video, that would make them 18 years old. Incredible, they're still making and selling these things. Now, what can go wrong with them? Well, here's one very common problem. You hit the power button and nothing happens. It's dead. Now, this is not the same as the glitchy screen problem. Here we have one with a glitchy screen problem. Where it has like, like crazy nonsensical characters. That's a different problem and has a different fix. Most of the problems with TI-83 calculators are related to uh, electrical connectivity. In other words, you've got a bad contact somewhere. Now, to begin troubleshooting, we will flip it over, remove the battery cover, exposing the four AAA batteries. Now, in order to troubleshoot, we will require the use of a simple multimeter. Okay, so the first question is, are the batteries themselves good or not? Well. These are alkaline batteries. They should be 1.5 volts each. We can see, we can easily test the voltage by. We don't we don't even have to remove the batteries to do this. We can actually reach the terminals. Set it on the 2.5 volt scale, and here we go. 1.5 volts. Okay, so they all measure good 1.5 volts. If I put my probes on the contacts here and here, I should get the sum of all four batteries, and that's 6 volts. Okay, so we know our batteries are good. The batteries are located in the back cover. The electronics are located on the front cover. So they are separated. There's a connection between the front and the back. And that's where the problems often develop. There are a couple of pins on the back cover which touch connectors on the system board on the front. Now here's a little trick. I'm going to put the cover back on. Now, the battery cover, as you can see, has two little hinges here and here. And those hinges insert into these two little openings here and here. Now, that was very fortunate for us because those two little openings expose two metal contacts, which are on the system board. In fact, Maybe if we get this light on there just right, you might be able to see the those copper contacts. See that little yellow metal down there? Now, that's on the system board. Those two little metal contacts will tell us if we have voltage getting to the system board. So if we take our voltmeter, and we touch it to those metal contacts, we see nothing. So we know there's a problem somewhere between the batteries and the board inside. Okay, It's not making contact somehow. That's why our calculator isn't working. So we need to open this thing up and see what's going on. In order to take this apart, we will begin by removing our AAA batteries. Now we have this little cover here. This cover is held on with a small Phillips head screw. We can remove that screw with a number zero Phillips head screwdriver. And underneath is a 1616 coin battery, which keeps the, uh, this battery here is what 
keeps memory going when you remove the main batteries. You don't have to remove the battery, but you do need to remove that screw because that holds the front and back together. Next, we have six screws to remove. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are T6 Torx screws, and you'll need a T6 Torx screwdriver. We will go ahead and remove those now. Okay. Now, with the six hex screws removed and that Phillips head screw removed, we can now pry the, the back off of the front. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver. Now, be very careful here because, you know, you can easily break something here. Just gently, just gently prying it apart. Don't, like, let it slip and you know, drive in, in, in here and, and then break a bunch of stuff. Okay. Now this this is a uh, shielding material probably for uh, electromagnetic. Now, here's the problem. These are those contacts that we could see through those little openings right there. There they are. And here's how it works. These two contacts here and here contact metal here and here. You can see those metal contacts. That's how the battery current gets to the system board. Problem is that these metal contacts can wear that copper away, and you can see that that's happened here. I mean, look at that. That really is a mess. This copper here is really paper thin. You know, you, you can try to maybe solder some metal, metal on here, but that's really hard. This It's very hard to solder onto that surface. And it, you, I've tried this before. It just sort of blobs up. It doesn't give you really a, a very flat surface. It is very common to see damage to these metal contacts by these metal contacts. In fact, in every TI-83 I've looked at, there's always at least a little damage caused by these contacts. Now, these contacts, it, it is possible to bend these a little bit, one way or the other. If you can bend this contact so that it falls on a place where there's good metal, that could fix the problem. I'm going to bend this metal contact so that it will fall on a different location on this contact, a place where there's good metal. Okay, so now I've put a significant bend on this contact. And now I'm going to pop the front and back together and see if we've reestablished continuity. We shall put our batteries back in. We'll now check some voltages. First, we'll check some of them, all the voltages there. We got six volts. Now let's check our metal contacts on the inside. Okay, and it appears that we have six volts on the main board. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, very good. It comes back to life. That was our problem. Now, when you pull the back off the front, you are disconnecting the memory battery. So you're going to lose your memory. So the first time you turn it on, you're going to get this message that says RAM cleared. That's perfectly normal. You just hit the clear button and you're back in business.
Okay, very good. Nice, easy fix. Okay, so a very common problem with this calculator is the contacts on the battery side wearing through the contacts on the system board side. And the fix is to simply bend the contacts so it lands on good metal instead of worn out metal. Now, what about the case in which the calculator is dead and the batteries are all good and there's no leakage anywhere and we put our probes on the inner connectors and it measures good. We're getting electrical contact to the main board. Well, then we have to look further and specifically the cable connecting the main board to the screen. I'm going to open up the calculator one more time here so we can see what I'm talking about. This cable right here. This is probably the most frequent failure in these calculators is this cable right here. It connects the main board to the board that carries the uh, LCD display. These cables go bad with very high frequency. Now, usually when they go bad, they give you funny characters. They give you funny lines and dropouts and stuff like that on the screen. But if it's bad enough, it might prevent the screen from coming on at all. OK, so that's something to consider. Now, those can be repaired, and I will show you how to do that in a separate video. Here are three other Texas Instruments 83 plus calculators, looking at the back. And again, we have evidence of damage on all of these, you know, what, what, what connector pads, I guess we would call them. Here you can see in this first one, a little darkened area. That's where the copper has been worn away by the uh, contacts from the, uh, from the battery side. Okay. Here we have another example. It's worn away even worse. The defects are even worse here. Okay, that's just the dark area is just missing copper. Here we have this third example, a big defect here. And now here is one where I attempted to repair it by, by uh, putting some solder on here. I tried to solder over the defect. It worked, but you can see it's kind of sloppy. I really don't recommend doing that if you can avoid it because you, you could end up you know, damaging the board permanently. But anyway, uh, so this is, you know, if you look at one of these Texas Instruments 83s, in almost all cases, you're going to you're going to see some damage to these these uh, contacts. But we have a nice easy fix. These contacts here, that's what's doing the damage. They're really very poorly designed. Uh, they're they're very narrow. They're sharp. They they tend to dig into the copper on the other side. But if you do get into a situation where they will no longer conduct, the trick is to simply bend these, you know, just bend these one way or the other a little bit so that they land in a slightly different location. And that should fix your problem, at least for a while. In summary, with the Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus calculator, there are two very common problems. It can cause it to fail. The first is this cable here, which will cause what's called a glitchy screen problem. But also we have the problem here of poor contact between the batteries and the main board caused by wearing away of the copper contacts. The symptom of worn away copper contacts is the calculator will be dead. It won't turn on at all. That's because no current is getting to the board. 
We can easily test for this using a simple voltmeter, taking advantage of the fact that the openings for the lid give us access to two points on the main board. Here and here. If we're not reading any voltage on these two points, it means that we have bad contact. It is very common. In fact, the majority of these calculators have damage on these contacts. As you can see, the dark areas where the copper is worn away. The solution is simply to take these metal contacts here and bend them a little bit one way or the other so that they land on a different spot on this metal pad and thus re-establish continuity. And that's it. Thanks for watching.